This week in engineering, American manufacturing looks good for 2021, software dominates the car of 2030, and PSA and FCA spawn Stellantis at last. Today's episode is brought to you by engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on engineering.tv today. It's official. The long-awaited merger of the PSA Group and Fiat Chrysler has been approved and the new automaker will be called Stellantis. Now the combination creates the fourth largest automaker in the world and will be headed by CEO Carlos Tavares and North American Operations Chief of FCA, Mike Manley. While declared a merger, it's widely recognized that PSA Group effectively controls the combination. From a manufacturing standpoint, the merger has several significant implications. There's very little overlap in production capacity for North American brands such as Jeep and Ram, although it's widely expected that small car platforms will be shared between Fiat and PSA nameplates. With Ford all but abandoning passenger car production in favor of crossovers, SUVs, and light trucks, speculation in the industry is rife that passenger car production under the Chrysler and Dodge nameplates may disappear. Now, the group may have a marketing conundrum for the vital American market. Fiat has struggled, and Alfa Romeo is a niche product, while Ram and Jeep are high-margin, high-volume success stories. Europe is oversupplied with small car product, and system capacity rationalization was expected even pre-merger. Electric vehicle platforms are expected to be shared, and the new combination may impact Tesla as well. Fiat Chrysler was a major buyer of EV credits from Elon Musk's company, offsetting CO2 emissions, but with significantly lower CO2 emissions of the PSA portfolio in the new Stellantis conglomerate, it's unclear whether EV credits will be necessary going forward. Much will depend on the new Biden administration's environmental policy, which may include CO2 mandates similar to the European model. In that case, Stellantis may import EV product to the US or develop electrified truck products as Ford and GM are doing. The merger is expected to generate $6 billion in savings, although the company has declared that no production facilities will close. But with 14 brands, some rationalization is inevitable. With only a single product left in the Fiat lineup for the US, the venerable Italian brand will they may be leaving American shores yet again, and oddly, there are indications that PSA may reintroduce Peugeot to the US market. Now, global automaking is undergoing a period of chaotic and turbulent change, and we expect mid-size automakers to rapidly merge into large conglomerates. So far, Chinese manufacturers have made little headway in the European and US markets, but EV brands such as Polestar show that consumers today have few reservations about purchasing Chinese product. But don't expect a Chinese-built three-quarter ton crew cab anytime soon. Hybrid and electric vehicles are enjoying sales growth in major markets like Europe that far outstrip internal combustion engine technology, primarily driven by CO2 regulation and carbon taxes. Software control of battery and drive lines in EVs, well, it's a growth industry, but the rest of the vehicles are moving toward code also. Automotive electronics supplier Molex has released the results of a survey of global automotive leaders describing where technology will go in the car of the future. 230 participants in engineering, product, procurement, R&D, supply chain innovation, and strategy were polled at automotive companies with at least 1,000 employees. 91% of respondents say cars will be either fully electric, 64%, or hybrid, 27%. 97% of respondents also expect range anxiety to be solved by 2030. 94% expect cars to include autonomous driving, but only 28% envision fully self-driving cars. 56% believe that the car of 2030 will be at least 50% more expensive than today's cars. When asked to identify areas with the most potential to reduce the price of a 2030 car, battery cost savings, that's 40%, software integration, 34%, and manufacturing processes, 32%, led the way in the survey. In addition, 96% of respondents agreed that the car of the future will require manufacturing factory innovation. According to the survey respondents, the top three features most likely to be standard by 2030 are high-speed Wi-Fi, wireless charging, and car-to-car -car communication. The five most important innovation areas in the next decade were electrification at 38%, connectivity 33%, passenger safety 29%, quality and reliability at 28%, and software-defined infrastructure at 27%. Interestingly, the automotive industry itself is not expected to be the sole leader in this shift. Companies such as Apple, Google, and Microsoft are expected to gain momentum because of their expertise in the user experience and human-machine interfaces. Equally significant is industry sentiment that China is more likely to produce the car of the future first, followed by the US, Japan, and then Germany. Between COVID-19 and the most contentious election in years, it's been a chaotic year for US business, manufacturing included. But there are signs that 2021 will be better. 
IHS Markets Purchasing Managers Index, well, it's a broad indicator of health in U.S. manufacturing, and December data shows an upturn that's the sharpest since September 2014. According to the company, output and new orders increased, and supply chain disruption was mitigated by firms passing on higher input prices. Based on an index with a zero growth figure of 50, seasonally adjusted December PMI numbers logged in at 57.1, up from 56.7 in November. That's the best improvement in U.S. manufacturing sector in over six years. Production growth also improved, with a pace of increase the second highest since March of 2015. American manufacturers reported that pent-up demand was moderated by continuing COVID shutdowns in some regions. Supplier delays and reduced production capacity are still factors, but the market figures suggest that industry is well-positioned for strong post-COVID recovery in 2021. That's it for This Week in Engineering. This episode was brought to you by Engineering.com. If you like this show, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification button for our next episode. For deeper engineering content, visit engineering.tv for exclusive shows not found on our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and see you again next time.